Hey everyone, welcome to Happy GH 4 minute videos for developers season 26 episode 4. In this episode, we're going to discuss about Happy GH private cloud deployment architecture and different components involved in Happy GH. Myself Anil Sagar, I work at Google and Happy G platform. Let's understand what are the different components involved in Happy GH in high level. The first one is Happy GH UI where you log in like apigee.com slash edge and where you build your APIs. When you build APIs, when you create assets like key value maps or target servers and deploy the API proxies, all the functionality is coming from management server, which is the heart of the Apigee Edge API management platform. Once your API is ready, you're going to deploy to Apigee Edge gateways by choosing the environment that you want to deploy. Let's call the runtime environment as a gateway. In general, there will be more than one API gateway in Apigee Edge platform where your API proxy will be deployed. These gateways are front-ended by Enterprise Load Balancer, which will be load balancing the traffic to multiple gateways. Apigee Edge also provides developer portal where you can onboard your app developers or partners or internal developers who would like to consume the APIs. Once you onboard the developers, they will get the keys and they will access the APIs, which is going through the Enterprise Load Balancer, which will be load balancing their traffic to different gateways, which will ultimately go to the backend and comes back and again go back to the client. After we send the response back to the client, we asynchronously capture the analytics into the analytics backend so that you can able to get the end-to-end -end visibility of what is going on in your API management platform. Obviously, you can scale each of these components uh, infinitely and horizontally. Let's say you see more uh, load on your API, so you just add one more API gateway. When you add one more gateway, all the API's proxies deployed will be automatically replicated near real time and the new gateway will start taking the API traffic. Not only just the gateways, you can also deploy analytics machines in multiple redundant fashion so that there is no single point of failover even for analytics. Let's say you see more load on coming to your developer portal where the APIs are consumed like viewing the API documentation onboarding developers. You can also have multiple machines where your developer portal will be running active active mode. Similarly, you see more people building APIs, then you can able to have even Edge UI and management server installed in multiple machines active active mode. Even the infrastructure services like Cassandra, Zookeeper and OpenLDAP also can be replicated in redundant fashion so that there is no single point of failover in the entire Apache Edge platform. You can able to scale these components individually based on the need and scale up and scale down. The entire Apigee Edge platform can be replicated across two different data centers in active active mode so that you can able to handle the load that is coming from different geographical locations as well as satisfies the needs of disaster recoverable options. Let's take a look at different Apigee Edge components involved uh, in the Apigee Edge API management platform. Apigee Edge sits in between the client and target system. Primarily we have seen it is divided into gateway and API services, developer services and analytics services. As we have seen, the client will make a gate call to API gateway and goes to the backend. The management server is the heart of Apigee Edge where all the functionality is implemented. And uh, gateway is divided into router and message processor. Router just distributes the traffic to the message processor where your API proxies gets executed. The other components involved in API services or the management services is OpenLDAP where Apigee Edge credentials are stored and permissions are mapped. And Zookeeper takes care of um, maintaining all these different components and making sure whenever a new component is added, it is added to the topology and all your data gets synchronized. Cassandra is a NoSQL database that Apigee uses to store your keys, tokens, developers, and developer apps. And whenever a response goes back to the client, API metadata is pushed to the analytics server, which consists of Cupid, which is a queue management system, Cupid injection server that takes the data analytics data and injects into Postgres database. You can able to surface the Postgres data using Apigee management APIs. Developer portal uses Postgres as a database to store all the developer portal related content. That's a high level overview of Apigee Edge components. You never deal individually with these components. You just deal with Apigee Edge API management platform. Apigee takes care of upgrading all these individual components as part of Apigee releases. Hope you have enjoyed this video. If you are interested to evaluate Apigee Edge, you can reach out to us using this link. If you have any questions, please feel free to post your questions in commit at apigee.com. Please share this video with your friends and colleagues and help us spread the love for APIs. You can also subscribe to YouTube channel and stay updated with new videos.